animators. It is I. Don't mind my pink skin. I got sunburns in an obstacle course marathon. I told you about it in the live stream. Anyway, you are here because of the title, aren't you? Thanosnap. Disintegration tutorial. Yes! Today we're going Thanos mode in my meter. Disclaimer! I know Anxious Cynic has done this tutorial before me, but I've had my community suggest this tutorial for a while now and it's finally been voted. If you want the chance to vote for my tutorials, join my Discord server, because you get to influence what I post on this channel. Let us not waste time, because today we have a lovely survival world in here and a Steve boy on the roof. So lovely. We're gonna kill him. Let's just get to the point. There's no point in stalking. First, add a surface. There we go! We're going to use something called the Alpha Glitch. I have made a full tutorial on the Alpha Glitch, but it's old so don't mind my voice and stuff. Click the eye corner to go see it right now, but that's only if you want to learn about it. You can follow what I do in this tutorial and you'll do just fine. But if you want to understand, click that video first. And its alpha should be brought down to 1%. Now it's barely visible, alright? But if I drop the surface's render depth, lower than zero, the surface is going to be rendered first and the scenery is not visible behind it. And neither is the Steve. Render depth determines what is rendered first. So technically, if you lower the scenery's render depth even further, the scenery will render first, then the surface and then the Steve. So we can hide the Steve but not the scenery. Which is an advantage if you want to do this integration. However, we can see the sky glitching as well. So let's not go below the render depth of zero. You can get some pretty funny effects with render depth. Ugh. Steve is going to have a render depth of like 10 or so, and the surface is going to have a higher render depth than that. So we're not going below zero, we're not glitching anything else except the Steve and the surface. That's it! We have the power to hide Steve, but not the scenery. Now let's raise the alpha so we can see the size of this thing, animate the surface, and that's how the Steve is going to disintegrate. So now, if we come back and make this surface alpha 1%, it will look like this. So we have the disappearing part done. All we need is the particles. The tutorial is pretty much done at this point, but I'm gonna show the particles as well because like it's supposed to be a full tutorial. Let's make the surface visible again so we can see the edges and stuff. So lock the particle creator onto the surface. Now it's going to move with the surface and we no longer have to worry about where I should put it. Uh. The X needs to be on minus 8 because it is 8 points away from the center and this is the very edge. Let's add a camera first so we have a point of reference here. This is where the surface actually hits Steve's face. So this is where the particle should be visible. Let's add a cube here and just delete it from the timeline. Just needs to be inside the project, that's all we need. I'm gonna name it Particles Skin because these are going to be our skin particles. The particles disappear after two seconds of being spawned because we're gonna change the kind sprite to be this cube. It's now summoning cubes and we made them disappear after two seconds so we don't get too laggy. Now the scale should be random from 0.02 to 0.1 or something. I think it's too big so 0.05. Now let's go for speed of minus 2 to, to 2. So it's random and it's very slow like this. Actually wait, let's do something else. If we try raising the X, it goes into the right. So this is the positive X. Let's actually make particles fly a bit faster into the X direction. Let's go for a multiply of 0.8. You probably don't understand exactly what that does. If you want to make a full video explaining how particle creators work, vote for it in my Discord server. I make a lot of tutorials using the particle creators and I use some features that most people don't really understand. So if you want me to make a tutorial on them, you really should vote. Scale change is gonna be like 3, 2, so they last a bit longer. Okay, that's sufficient enough. Let's make it summon around the region of the creator, make it into a box. Now let's scale this box down. Also, yeah, the particles should have a low enough render depth. So if the surface has two, this should be lower than two. And I think that's it. Now, all we need to do is get the colors right. So we're gonna make it random. And we're going to pick the brightest and the darkest color of Steve's skin. I have a good method to do this. You click this icon to toggle off the lighting. So now there are no shadows in this project. And now I want you to press the print screen button. Now open up any image editing software. I'm gonna use paint.net and just paste in whatever you've copied. Expand canvas. Basically, you've done a screenshot. That's it. And now if we zoom in and color pick this brightest color here, you will get the hexagonal code. We need to copy that because as the start color, we're gonna paste in the hexagonal code but control plus V to paste. That's it. We have our brightest color. Now if we come back to this image, let's go for the darkest one, copy this hexagonal code and paste it in the end color. So now we have Steve's skin tones. That's mostly it. The particle creator is done. We 
said that the screen touches Steve at this point. So this is where particles should start spawning. So anytime before that, the particles would not be spawning. Particles start summoning at this point. This is where it gets past his head. So this is where they stop spawning as well. We kind of get this. Which is perfect for us. If we put the alpha back down to 0%, we get this. Of course, obviously, you're gonna want to go for like 8,000 particles or something. I want to duplicate the particle skin and let's make the surface visible again so we can see what's going on. Click this icon to make another instance of it in the timeline. Lock it on the surface as well. X goes to minus 8, so it's on the edge there. This should go somewhere here. This is where it hits the arms, so this is where it starts spawning particles. And it stops summoning them here. That's it. Well, it is the same one for the second arm. So it starts summoning them somewhere here and then it stops summoning them here. We have done this Now we do the same thing for the body the hair and the legs the pants whatever I'm back took a good 10 minutes I have particles for the face for the arms for the hair the shirt both of the sleeves and the pants Now if we play this we kind of get an outline of Steve already But of course this is showing way less particles now because of the real-time rendering put it down to 1% now so the surface is also invisible What that does is wow pretty much uh, makes Steve disintegrate Thanos snap Select the surface, turn off cast shadows, turn off fog, turn off SSAO. Disintegration. Although I wish there was a way to get like a smooth outline, a smooth bend to this. However, it doesn't work. The bottom should become partially invisible, right? No, that's not how it works. That would be very nice. Unfortunately, that's not the way it works. You can always just make it better by adding multiple particles. So it actually looks more like a disintegration. Or if you're really dedicated, you can do what Lifecraft did and just kind of add each individual block on the character and animate the block flying out. But that's honestly a pain. I don't want that for any of you guys. That's way too much. So this disintegration thing here will have to do. We're still talking talking about 100% Minimator. And that actually wraps up my disintegration tutorial. I hope you enjoyed If you did, let me know by dropping a like and hitting the bell for more content like this. Also, again, if you want to suggest and vote for the tutorials you want me to make, the best place for that is my Discord server. These tutorials come directly from the Discord server. So that's it for me. I hope you learned a thing or two. Now, good luck animating and stay sharp.